Hello there, my fellow booze aficionados, kindred spirits, spirits, and just lovers of all things delicious. Welcome to Smart Ass Corner. I'm Adam, your resident smart ass, and we're talking scotch. Oh yes, that glorious Scottish elixir of life. We're gonna be talking about the who, the what, the where, the why, the when, the how. So, grab a glass and join me, won't you? But before you do, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, set your notifications so you don't miss out on any of our amazing upcoming content. Oh, say hi to Pete. Hi, Pete. So what is scotch exactly? Simply put, scotch is whiskey made in Scotland from malted barley and in a pot still. Think of scotch kind of like an omelet that only needs three ingredients. That's water, grain, and yeast. Make sure that when you brew it though, that it's over 40% ABV. So the Scots have been distilling whiskey since at least the 15th century, taking it commercial in the 18th. Thank God for Scotland. And the word whiskey actually derives from the Gaelic, whiskey bay, which translates roughly into water of life, or like in the Italian, aqua vita, or in French, l'eau de vie. Ah, international smartass right here. The more you know. So let me hit you with a few more quick Scotch facts. At any given moment in Scotland, there's over 20 million casks of Scotch maturing right now. And the most expensive bottle of scotch ever sold was a 60-year-old Macallan that sold for 1.9 million bucks in 2019. And who says there's a recession, right? Right? So, what are these rules that I speak of? Well, rule number one, and this is very important, whiskey has to be distilled in Scotland. Sorry, Florida. It's just not gonna cut it. Rule number two is that it has to be distilled twice. Or if you're in the lowlands of Scotland, three times. Rule number three is that the alcohol has to clock in at under 94.8%. You know, for the hair on your chest feeling that you get when you drink it. Oh, another thing. Scotch has to be matured in oak barrels for at least three years. And these can be virgin barrels or they can be barrels that have already held sherry, or wine, or bourbon, or some other spirit. Just don't mix them. That would be a bad idea. Also, you shouldn't add anything while it's in the barrel. Just maybe some water, maybe some caramel coloring, but that's it. Last, but certainly not least, scotch is whiskey without the E. The Americans, they add the E. The Irish add the E as well, but the Welsh, the Japanese, most of the other producers, they leave the E off. While every distillery has its own unique take on scotch, whiskeys also share certain characteristics based on the region that they're distilled in as well. This is called terroir, and there are six main regions in Scotland that produce scotch, so we're gonna go through all six of them, discuss some of the regional characteristics, and talk about some top examples from each one. The Highlands, Located north of Glasgow and Edinburgh is the largest of all of the whiskey producing regions in Scotland. It's an incredibly diverse area. You're gonna find all different kinds of scotches there. Maybe even one distilled by the Loch Ness Monster. You never know. For example, the Glengoyne here from the south is intense and grassy. Oban from the west is fruity, but also a bit briny as well. My northerner friend, the Glimmerangi here, is aromatic and spicy. Ardmore, from the east, is smoky. And, fun fact, Glen Turret, the oldest distillery in all of Scotland, is one year older than the United States of America. It's also located in the Highlands as well. Allow me to introduce you to the Lowlands and their nice soft flavors. The lowlands are actually located in between the highlands 
and England. It's a pretty flat area known mainly for haggis and Denny Boyle films. The lowland whiskies are actually triple distilled, giving them this really nice, soft, gentle flavor. And the joke in Scotland is actually that they're called the lowland ladies because of their proximity to England, but it's actually the triple distillation process that makes them so soft and light. Glen Kinchy of Edinburgh and Akintoshan of Glasgow are two of the best examples of this really smooth, easy drinking scotch with hints of toffee, grass, and cinnamon. Enjoy. There are actually over 800 islands in Scotland, but very few of them are actually inhabited. But where there are Scots, there's scotch. Two of the most well-known distilleries in the islands are Highland Park and Torrenmore. Whiskies from this region are normally smoky, briny, and herbal, but Yura here actually goes for kind of a nutty, oily taste. Don't know which island whiskey to try next? Really simple answer. Try them all. Now, Islay technically belongs to the islands, but because it's a particular beast in and of itself, we're giving it its own video and classifying it kind of separately. So what makes this place so special? In a word, peat. So what is peat? Well, because of the really strong winds on this island, locals were forced to basically burn rotten plants to make fires. This also applies to the fires that are used to dry the barley in the scotch production process, which gives these particular scotches their smoky, peaty flavor. For instance, the Lagavulin here is actually quite known for a very heavy peaty flavor. But if you'd like to try something delicious, we've got it for you. Try our very own son of a peat right here. Not his son, our scotch. Space-side whiskies fall somewhere along the spectrum of your light lunchtime scotches like, say, a Glenlivet, and the more heavy-duty, really, like, kick-you-in-the-ass scotches like this Macallan right here. Glenfiddich, with its legendary green bottle, is actually the first single malt scotch to be advertised outside of Scotland and is still the world's number one best-selling scotch. Here's a confusing fact for you. A lot of the space-side whiskies that we've been talking about are actually labeled as Highlander whiskies. There's a pretty reasonable excuse for this. What happened was in 2009, Scotland was redefining the boundaries between the regions, and overnight, some of these space-side distilleries just got lumped into Highlanders. Confusing, I know, but they're still delicious. What can you do? Campbelltown is actually the peninsula just to the east of Islay, and during the 19th century, this was the scotch capital of the world. There were over 34 individual distilleries operating here. Nowadays, not so much. There's only a couple. For example, uh, Glen Scotia. It's known for its light and grassy flavor, but the other distilleries are producing whiskeys and scotches that are very diverse, have a wide ranging palette. Some Campbelltown whiskeys are known for their wet dog flavor. It kind of reminds one of a wool sweater that you wore in the rain and took off and then just didn't dry it. Now, for those of you with a short attention span, let's do a quick recap. The Highlands, very diverse, from grassy and fruity to spicy and smoky. The Lowlands, light and gentle. The Islands, smoky and maritime. Isle, peaty as Speyside, light and grassy or rich and sweet. And Campbelltown, light or smoky. There's five of them. There's single malt, single grain, blended malt, blended grain, and just f***ing blended. Single malt is a scotch that comes from one distillery made in a pot still of a mash of malted barley. Single grain also comes from one distillery, but the word single doesn't actually refer to the grains, it refers to the distillery. It doesn't have to exclusively come from malted barley either. You can throw in a whole bunch of different types of cereals and grains. Then 
you've got your blends. Blended malt is a mixture of two or more single malts from separate distilleries. Blended grain is the same, but with single grain whiskies as opposed to single malt whiskies. And just plain blended is a mixture of single malts and single grains from all different types of distilleries. All right, all right, all right. Folks, hopefully you've learned a thing or two or 20 about scotch, that magic elixir of drinks. Thank you for joining us at the Smart Ass Corner. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, set up the notifications, all that good stuff. The whole shebang a bang. This has been Adam, your smart ass in residence. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Oh, don't forget to say goodbye to Pete. Say goodbye, Pete.